Hi, and welcome to my channel. My name is Tai Ku. And today we have the Rolex Oyster Perpetual 39. This is one of Rolex's entry level models. Actually, not one of. I think actually it is the it is their um, entry level, their, their lowest price Rolex. And it retails for about 5,700 US. Rolex's entry level models used to be, um, it used to start with the Air King, which was 34 millimeters, but it has since now been discontinued. Well, actually, well, the Air King has not been discontinued. Um, they do have a newer style of Air King. And I think it's the, I think it's 40 millimeters now. So, but the 34 millimeter style is now gone. And, um, and the new Air King, it looks completely different, but that's for a different video. The Oyster Perpetual comes in five different case sizes. It comes in 34 millimeters, 36 millimeters, and the latest one, which is this one, and it's 39 millimeters. And also has two smaller case sizes, um, but those are mainly for women's, um, the women's line. With each subsequent larger size, um, the price tag does go up. But around this price point, I do believe that the Oyster Perpetual 39 is probably one of the one of the best choices that you can get. Um, if we're talking around five thousand dollars, usually the brands that pop up into people's minds are Omega and Rolex. And for me personally, if choosing between Omega and Rolex, um, I'm gonna go for I'm gonna go for Rolex. And I think uh, the majority of the population um, would have the same choice. Oh, and um, uh, before I start, before we start taking a look at the watch, I, I just want to say that, yes, the uh, crown is pulled out. Um, in my last video, when I do cuts um, for the videos, it kind of bugs me when I see the second hand jumping everywhere. So it's pulled out right now. Okay, so let's take a look at the watch. So it has a beautiful sunray finish. And and obviously the the color choice I have is dark rhodium or gray. And it also comes in blue and um is it uh red or is it uh red grape, sorry. So it has the oyster bracelet. You can see the blue accent. Now, one thing I want to mention is I'm not quite sure how well this model will age because um, of the quirkiness of the blue accents. And on the other models, uh, instead of blue, it would have green accents for the blue and um, the grape is, I actually don't remember what the grape is. So I'm going to, have to look that up later. Here's the clasp. A good thing about this model is it sits right in the middle of two main types of watches. It's not really a dress watch and not really a sports watch like the Submariner. It's a very casual watch as I, I would call it. You can wear it with a suit, you can wear it with a hoodie. Um, I don't really think it matters. I think it's going to go well with everything. The case is made out of 904 stainless steel, um, which is proprietary to Rolex. And um, it has integrated lugs. Let me see. The bezel is beveled and mirror polished. In a way, it kind of feels like a less sporty version of the Explorer 1 39mm. Um, it seems like it has the same case, same bracelet and buckle, same bezel, and even the same movement inside. Other than the dial on the hands, it's probably the same watch. 
Inside, the movement they use is the caliber 3132, which is also the same movement um, for the Rolex Explorer 1. Power reserve is about 48 hours, which is uh, not great, but pretty, pretty normal for watches these days. Like all movements manufactured by Rolex, it is certified chronometer. This is a perfect daily beater watch. It's, uh, its quality is robust and it's discreet. Nothing really jumps out at you. It can go with anything and we're pretty much wear it anytime you want. So I guess I'll talk about uh, why I got this watch. The main reason I got it was because uh, before this one, I had gotten the uh, Rolex BLNR, the Batman, which I did a review on not too long ago. And I, I thought I was going to wear the Batman every day, but because of the polished center links, um, it scratches quite easily. And I just didn't feel like banging up the Batman. So I decided to get, um, I still wanted a Rolex to wear as a daily beater, for, as an everyday watch. So I decided to get this. Um, it was it was well within my price range. Um, you can get this you can get this used for under five grand pretty easily in great condition. Um, one thing I will note that oh I forgot to mention that so well as you can see that there's no date on it, and I didn't think I missed the date. I don't usually use the date. But I do kind of miss seeing, you know, those the numbers and the magnifying glass of Cyclops that's on my GMT. So if you're a person that needs the date, I would suggest you get either the date just or just another Rolex model that has a date. But to be completely honest, um, this this model, it, because it goes with everything and because um, it, it's so casual and it's somewhat discreet, you know, it's gray dial, um, stainless steel bracelet. It kind of gets boring. When I wear it on my wrist or when I'm driving and I glance at the time, nothing really pops out at me. I think if you're looking for a Rolex at um, towards the entry entry models, the entry level, I think it's a great choice um, if you need a modern Rolex. Or I mean, what I, what I should say is like a brand new Rolex. If you're getting a brand new Rolex, this is definitely the, the cheapest one you can get. Um, but if you're talking about spending around five to $6,000 for a Rolex used or new, you can either get this or you can probably source yourself a five digit Submariner. <clears throat> or even um, a five-digit GMT. Those are both great choices. If I was to recommend somebody, I would I would tell them to try this on and also try on the five-digit Submariner. Um, I'm saying five-digit because a six-digit is obviously uh, more than five to six thousand um, dollars. Closer towards the six six to seven thousand used. Okay, so I just paused the video and I went to double check on uh, Watch Recon to see like what the prices of used uh, used uh, Submariners and GMTs go for. And please, please disregard what the prices I just quoted you guys on because it looks like the prices of the Pepsi GMT have skyrocketed, the five digit. And even the Submariner, the five digit Submariner, it, they seem to be, um, prices are going up on, on Rolex. Uh, not too long ago, I was just at a, I was just at a uh, jewelry place um, that that sold uh, pre-owned Rolexes, and the five-digit Submariner was. Um, I'm in Canada, so it was a, it was seven thousand Canadian, which uh, equals roughly to fit, like five thousand US, fifty five hundred uh, US, and um, and the Explorer two I remember was was 5,500 Canadian, so, which worked out to, I don't know, like, maybe 4,000 US. And I remember these prices because uh, when I was shopping for a pre-owned Rolex, at the time, um, I was going to get the Rolex Explorer 2 5-digit, um, either the polar, the polar white or the black one, 
and it was just in it was uh, the price tag was um 5500 uh, like i said it was around 4000 or 4200 us so the so that price was like marked on my brain cuz i knew that that's what i needed that's what i had to save up to and then um and then as i looked around i saw they had a submariner as well and then i said to myself well the sub's not that much more and uh, you know, and then I can have a sub, the five-digit sub, and the sub was about fifteen hundred dollars more. So comparing the um, prices then, which was uh, October or November of last year, till now, uh, definitely looks like the price, the pricing of Rolex has gone up. Unless it's unless this is a Canadian thing, uh, where watches are just cheaper in Canada. Well, I know watches are cheaper in Canada because. I work in the U.S., so I get paid in U.S. currency, but I live in Canada. So when we do the conversion rate, um, we actually get a better, I actually get a better deal when I convert the U.S. to Canadian. Kind of like when I bought my Batman, um, when I, con I, I didn't get a discount on it as, you know, you're not getting a discount on the Batman. So it was 10, about 10, it was 10,200 in Canadian and when I converted it to um, my U.S. funds, it became like $7,800, $7,900, which is significantly, significantly uh, lower in price than if you were to even buy it on the gray market, used, or just anywhere else um, in the U.S. And I bought it on an AD at a Rolex boutique. Anyways, to bring this video to an end... I definitely recommend this model um, if you're budget conscious or if you're just looking for your one and only one and done Rolex that you can wear every day. Goes with everything. I will also be doing a future comparison review of this one and the Batman. If there's any other watches you want to see me review, please comment below and remember to like and subscribe. Thank you.